Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this time I'll be looking at the Vermin Swarm um, release. So this is the alpha book that has been released on June the 3rd. Um, yeah, it's it's quite a new book. Um, it's quite an interesting book. I always didn't really like the previous iteration of, of Vermin Swarm because I thought that there were some design failures in the book, but uh, I'll not get into that now. So we are looking at it at a book that um, is still in its alpha and the first responses I've seen um, are more or less focused around the fact that the designers really wanted to get some general idea of, of the book across but the book is not that balanced yet um, or at least that seems to be the impression so the intention I assume now is that people on a, on a broader scale are going to test the book a bit um, and then um, yeah, it's going to be quite clear whether or not uh, the playtesters were right that some rules in the book are a little bit uh, extreme still. So yeah, let's just get into it. So the first concept in the uh, army is going to be the concept of tunnel markers. Um, so each vermin swarm army automatically gains one tunnel market marker, sorry, <laughs> and can gain additional tunnel markers by including certain choices in the army list. Uh, you can have up to four of these. Well, what do these do? Basically, the tunnel markers allow you to deploy units later in the game um, instead of from the board edge um, if you have uh, a unit that has tunnel reserve. So tunnel reserve is a special type of ambush. You cannot deploy the units uh, with the normal ambush rules, but instead you have to make them uh, come out of the tunnel markers. So basically this limits your ambushing units to a couple of places on the board. Um, I don't really... Oh, it's at step 7 of the pre-game sequence, so that's during spell selection. I believe then already the deployment um, has been done in the type of objectives and stuff. Uh, so you have already marked your, um, your terrain piece for, for example, King of the Hill. Um, you have already distributed the, uh, the objectives on the board. So afterwards you can still put your tunnel markers down. I don't know if this should be the right situation or whether this should be reversed because um, I would say that it could also make more sense um, to have first the tunnel markers appear and then the objectives um, because then your opponent can counterplay a little bit more on them. Um, but later about that. Uh, more on that later. Uh, so one of the universal rules in the army is going to be born into battle, which is basically that a character that goes in a unit has to stay in the unit, and I think this is to decrease the amount of uh, chaffy characters you have whilst you're still able to um, to have quite a lot of, uh, of low-cost uh, characters in the army, which is, I think, a really nice way to, to do it. Because otherwise you just end up with people playing very cheap characters that are just acting as chaff pieces. Then you have Calibus. Um This, I believe, this is some sort of a rule that used to be in place, or at least it used to be Calibus already. Um, it has changed a bit, so health point losses caused by friendly models, they are uh, ignored for panic and combat rest scores. Um, and you can shoot at any of your own units uh, that have Calibus, I believe. Um, Oh no, you might use shooting attack against enemy units in combat um, and then your friendly models have to be standard height or infantry models. So this also includes the Rad Ogres now. Then we have Eagle Standards. Eagle Standards, they work within 18 inches of the general and the unit gains rally around the flag with a range of 6 inches. Um, so I believe then everything within 6 inches of that unit gets um, rally around flag, so the, the, the reroll on the discipline test. That is quite nice. Um, this already points out one weakness in the book, and that is if you kill the general, then all of the eagle standards will um, stop to function. So the general is not only the general, it's also the BSB in that respect, um, extending quite a lot of, uh, of rally around the flag around the army. So I think it's going to be really important against when playing against Vermin Swarm to, to get rid of the general. Now we have life's cheap. Each health point loss of models is only counted as half a health point loss for the purposes of a combat score. 
Um, so this goes for the uh, half point losses that your enemy does to you. That is quite consequential. Uh, you do still run fractions up. Um, so in most cases um, where there's not a lot of damage being done, this doesn't really come that much into account. Um, however, I mean, for the combats where you do like 20 wounds or so, you're only going to count 10. But then again, probably if you do 20 wounds, then it's not going to go bad, not going to go well for the, for the rats anyway. So I, I would hope that this just swings the combats um, that are a little bit less favorable for the rats to being a little bit more favorable. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how this uh, turns out. Um, and then we have still the Valorous Discretion. You treat all enemy units as units with terror if you have Valorous Discretion. Um, I thought this would be maybe on the weapon teams. I didn't check uh, the weapon teams, but I think that's that. And then you have without number. If you take that option, all models on the army must take it, and basically then you get an infinite supply of, uh, of rats after all of your rats have already died. Um, however, these units, they lose scoring. Um, so that is quite important like for... Um, uh, for objectives, you're not going to be able to, to use these units. However, units with tunnel reserve you can still uh, um, use if they're just on your army list because they do have scoring. Uh, then, yeah, the thing that struck me the most is that uh, there's no rule anymore that increases your, uh, your discipline. Uh, so, you're not going to get the rank bonus as a discipline bonus anymore. And we'll get to the discipline of the choices later, but in some cases it's not that pretty. <laughs> so we will see about that. Um, yeah, then the attack attributes. Um, so this is mostly where the damage comes into play. Co op coordination is going to be a big one here. So the model gains two instances of fight an extra rank whilst its unit is stat fast. So being stat fast is uh, really important because you can get like 10 attacks extra because most of it is infantry. Um, but also on Red Ogres, I don't know if Red Ogres have uh, co op co coordination. I don't even know if they're called Red Ogres at present. I'll just have a quick look. I think they are the fattest brutes, so they have counters, they have scoring, but they don't have uh, the core coordination, so they don't get fight an extra rank multiple times. Uh, but they already start with one instance of fight an extra rank, so that might already be enough, but we'll get to those guys later. Uh, here we were, lightning attacks. Uh, so lightning attacks, they become magical attacks. Strength is set to d6, AP is set to 2, so this is going to really be a lucky swing. Um, uh, AP2 is, is good, I think, because um, it seems fair. It's way better than AP10 than it used to be. Um, and strength set to d6, I think it's also really good uh, to have a swingy die roll in this instance. Strength 1 to 3 is not going to do that much. Strength 4 is going to hurt sometimes. Strength 5 is definitely going to hurt. And Strength 6 is just really good. Um, but then again, Strength 5 and 6 only happen one third of the time. So I think this is going to be more useful against uh, like Infantry or Resilience 3 targets than, uh, than Monsters now. And I think that it's also good. Um, I also like that... Uh, uh, the stuff against flying is gone of taking an extra d6 strength for it uh, that the, the Dreadmill used to have. Now we have Mishap. Mishap um, it replaces Misfire basically, but it also um, happens on some shooting units when they uh, roll a 1 to hit. Um, yeah, so when suffering a Mishap, the model's unit suffers d6 hits with strength 2 and AP 0. That is quite consequential, we'll get to that later also. Um, discussing some of the choices with mishap. If the trial and terror shooting mode was to use these hits, gain plus 4 strength and plus 4 AP. So suddenly you're looking at strength 6 AP, 4 D6 hits. Uh, trial and terror, so this is an alternative shooting mode for the weapon. Um, usually, um, if you use this, well, if the trial and terror shooting mode was used, that is when you trigger this uh, extra mishap also. So it is a little bit more risky. I, I really like this entire design of the mishap and the trial and terror. Um, and it's going to be a bit of a balancing act of um, 
making sure that people are go both going to use the regular firing mode and the trial and error firing mode. Um, because, yeah, it has to be rewarding either way. Then we have some special attacks. So we have the Cult of Iraman. Um, I believe this is going to be on the old Plague Disciples. Um, so if you have a close combat attack allocated towards the model with this cult, if it draws a natural one to it, then the model part inflicts one hit with toxic attacks attack against the attacking model's unit. Uh, so it's not linked anymore against the uh, uh, against just being being in base contact, but um, now it's it's really like if you roll a natural one to it. So the the more um, the, the units that are more offensively built, they would rather not want to go into this type of unit, I believe. <laughs> Whilst the units with more static combat res, for example, they, they might prefer to go into this kind of unit. Then the armory, we have the old trusted Gizil, uh, so it's still uh, 36 inches. It's strength 5 now, I believe it used to be strength 6, um, AP3 as accurate um, and unwieldy as it used to have. So this mishap here is on the two hit rolls, so this means that if you roll a 1 to hit, your unit is going to get d6 strength 2 AP0 hit. And then if the, you trigger the trial and tower mode, you only have a 24 inches range, but you have multiple points too. However, if you roll a 1 to, um, to hit, then your unit is going to have d6 strength 6 AP4 hits. That seems really, really beautiful brutal um, especially if you're gonna have a bigger unit because then it uh, will have quite a chance to trigger so it, it's gonna be quite risky to shoot, shoot these things at the trial and tower mode um, but then again sometimes you just need this uh, multiple wins too I like that it cannot be used in the standard shoot uh, because then basically your unit is already kind of lost and then you would do this and then uh, yeah that would be that would be really too strong um, also, this trial and error doesn't mention that you cannot get any panic tests from your own um, shooting casualties, I believe, because that's only the carriers. So that would still trigger a panic test. And then we have the rotary guns. Uh, the rotary guns, we'll get to them later, but they are also in units now. Um, so they have a range of 18 inches, D6 shots. So if you have three of those, um, then you're going to be at a bit of a volley gun uh, level. Um, well, if you have six of those in the unit, then you're really at a volley gun level, provided that you don't roll any sixes for the number of shots for the volley gun, because then you would get a minus one to it. Um, so, anyway, you have D6 shots per model, yeah, it's strength 4 AP2, you can also get D6 times 2 shots, there it is. Uh, but you're not a volley gun, so you don't get the minus one to it if you roll a 6 on the D6. You also gain reload in the same way as the other one, so you cannot stand and shoot with the weapon in that mode. And then the mishap happens on the roll for number of shots. So also, if you take the trial and tower here, then the chances of getting a mishap are also doubled. Um, I like that design, um, and also because the trial and tower is quite brutal. However, if you have a unit of, of like four of these models and you do it uh, on the trial and tower, firing mode then you're gonna end up with 46 times two shots so that's on average like 28 shots or so uh, <laughs> that is quite a lot if you hit on four plus if you wound on three plus with strength four you can end up with doing like 10 wounds if your unit also dies i mean it doesn't matter too much right if you manage to just kill off an entire elven unit um yeah then we have the canister launcher you can have nine models of these um, I believe this, these are also just in, in units. It used to be the globe launcher. You have a catapult two times two with toxic attacks. Uh, so if you have these in a unit and you have a target that you can shoot on with a range of 24 inches, this seems really nasty against uh, cavalry. Um, so yeah, single rank cavalry are not going to be that bothered. However. Um, you are still going to have quite a lot of hits uh, on the unit um, if you have multiple models in the unit uh, that are shooting at something. So the total number of simultaneous hits from a unit with this weapon cannot exceed the number of models in the target unit. However, um, 
if you have three of these guys, you have three catapults with two times two. Uh, you are going to inflict quite a lot of hits in the end. Uh, you can also set the range to 18 inches and then you do a little bit more than double the amount of hits and your mishap is not affected by this basically because it still triggers only on the misfire you're just rolling an equal amount of dice so i like the the the, the downside of the trial and error of the rotary gun design wise more but i think this kind of star launcher is also a little bit more uh, rock paper scissors and i think actually we will see less of these um, than the rotary guns, I would expect so, but yeah, the canister launchers are also a really great uh, anti-cavalry tool. However, I don't think the army really has to worry a lot about cavalry. And then we have the deep fire thrower. So the deep fire thrower is a flamethrower uh, with flaming attacks, and the bearer has flammable because well, he has a big oil canister on his back, I think. Um, yeah, once again, you cannot have more hits than uh, models in the unit, which is a nice correction to the uh, flamethrower, the nafta thrower that uh, uh, Vermin Hawks used to have. Um, so the range is uh, 18 inches. You can also fire at 12 inches and get a strength 4. And the mishap, once again, only happens on a 1. And we get to the hereditary spell for the Vermin Swarm, so this is now going to be the Awakened Swarm. This summons a unit of one or three Rat Swarms with center on the targeted point. Um, well, Rat Swarms have the following profile, and you can do this with a 36 inch range or an 18 inch range. Um, ah, right, Rat Swarms, they basically suck. If you just summon one Rat Swarm, then you have three hit points, which is really in Zwan. Um, and they have the endless tide rule, so the model's unit cannot declare any charges, units cannot declare any charges against red swarms, it's a bit like a wrecking team. Um, they ignore other units, units ignore red swarms uh, regarding unit spacing rule for all movement, so basically it's just a template that you put down on the table. They never block line of sight, um, and at the start of them, each magic phase you raise x health points, where X is equal to the number of health points in the unit, so you basically double your unit. Um, that is quite impressive. Then, when a unit of Rat Swarms touches another unit in possible terrain or the board edge, the Rat Swarm unit is immediately removed as casualty, and then um, da, 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 da. if it's removed as a casualty due to touching one or more other units, one of the units chosen by the active player suffers. Three hits for each removed Rat Swarm model. These hits are resolved with Strength 2, AP 1. I think this is a really flavorful spell. I should see it on the table to see how it works out. Um, because, yeah, it, it's, it's really funny. Um, so, I'm imagining the first turn of the game you cast this at probably uh, 36 inches or on 18 inches on a flank or something and then you try to move in the next uh, turn uh, with 12 inches. There is a bit of kind of play from your opponent um, with your opponent having one turn at least to react to you casting the red swarms because um, well you're gonna be able to just deal with them on your turn after they've been uh, created and then only the following turn you get at the start of the magic phase, so after movement you raise the health points. So, for example, you raise three red swarms, you get nine hit points on the table. If your opponent doesn't do anything about it, the next turn it's going to be 18 hit points. And then if these run into something, you get uh, yeah, six times three, 18 hits with strength two. So against something with resilience. Doesn't seem too impressive, even. Um, however, if you're gonna go war machine hunting with rat swarms, that could be uh, quite interesting. Um, I think it's a really nice spell. I think it's really funny. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just curious to see how it's gonna work out. I'm also curious to see how it's gonna work out in the sense of just players needing a needing a lot of 40 millimeter bases because yeah if you if you raise a unit and, and 
you don't have any models for it, then tournament legally you cannot use the models basically. So if you have an opponent who's just going to let you cast and then flood the field, at some point you're just going to run out of models. Even though rat swarms are going to be really easy to make on a 40 millimeter square base, you, you basically don't really need a model for a rat swarm unit, I think, because you can just uh, put uh, some kind of oval shaped something on a on a base and paint some eyes on it or whatever. Use a flock to camouflage the, the rats and off you go. Um, so I think it's really interesting. Um, I think it has been devised using uh, universal battles as a tool because not a lot of people are going to have so many rat swarms. Um, but that's also a little bit going to be true for the rest of the army, but we'll get to that. The magic items and stuff, I'm not going to go too much into them because, well, there's a lot of people doing reviews. And basically, they are, in my view, what you can expect from them. Like, you have the Doomblade, Doomblade still hurts, uh, but it also hurts to the user. Swarm Master gives you a lot of attacks. You have a pistol enchantment, you have light armor enchantment, you have the Banner of the Last Storm. So, this one I found interesting. Um, so, they changed it that. Um, parts of terrain features, including open terrain that are within 18 inches of the bear's models, are dangerous terrain too for models making a flying movement. So that, I think, is really interesting. Um, it is on the bear's models, so I don't know if there's a special unit that can take this or if it's BSB only, practically. Um, but dangerous terrain too for flying movement is in my view, really interesting because it doesn't forbid your opponent from making a flying move. It just really cripples them for it. And then there's some uh, some stuff that helps with ambushes and one that helps in combat. Blah 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 blah. blah. Then you have the storm rocket. Uh, so this is something that I found quite impressive. So this is aim two um, with a 24-inch range. So it's going to be a three plus if you. If you use it quite early in the game, uh, you have one short strength, five AP2 with area attack three times three for 40 points. This is really just an anti elven infantry item. Um, then we have the liar, so this is also quite interesting. Stop attacks made by enemy units within six inches of the bear suffer minus two to wound, um, meaning practically that you're gonna wound on a four up instead of a two up. I think that is uh, that is quite cool. Um, I, I like the tendency, the general tendency within Ninth Age, that we should play less single models and monsters, and stuff like this definitely helps to that. Uh, army organization, so characters is just uh, thirty-five percent, as is normal. Yeah, I believe so. Core, 25%, normal, special, no limit. Sun Gunners, 30%, seems fine. Bread and Games, 20%. Um, yeah, so the characters. This is the Ruinous Dictator. The Ruinous Dictator is the old, um, what was it used to be called? The Vermin Demon. Um, so it went down in price, <laughs> so that's the good part. <laughs> However, the, the uh, capabilities of this guy have also gone down quite a bit. This is going to be the first time that I will mention the discipline. So the discipline here is 6 and there's no way in which you can increase this in the army. Um, and he can also not take any special equipment. So this is going to be it. This is going to be what you have to work with. Uh, the model must also be the general. So you're going to have a general with discipline 6. That sounds appalling. Um, while within range of the models commanding presence, however, friendly units gain unstable and cannot voluntarily choose flee as a charge reaction. So in your 18-inch bubble, because you are gigantic, you are gonna have everything unstable. Um, so if you lose combat, you have to roll. If you uh, roll higher than your discipline, you can lose that many wounds. So it's um, that is not even that bad. Uh, cannot voluntarily choose flee as a charge reaction. I think in some cases that is going to be the worst part of the rule. Um, he went down in stats and I really really like this because he used to have 5 or 6 attacks at offensive 
eight, I believe. Um, and that meant that you would hit most things on 2+, plus with your 5 attacks, wound most things on 2+, plus with strength 6, and he had AP 10. Um, that was really over the top. Now we have 4 attacks with strength 5 and offense 4, strength 6 because of the halberd. So against cavalry you still are not too bad, however you only have defense of 4 now. Um, so most cavalry is going to at least hit you on a... On a four plus, um, he also lost divination, which I think is really, really nice um, because the scrying was especially just one of the, the things that made him so incredible. Because um, with a high offensive and defensive and scrying, it both increased your uh, your ranged protection and it also meant that in combat opponents would need fives or sixes to it. Um, on this kind of model, and that was just bad design. Um, he also went to a wizard adept instead of a, uh, a wizard master, and he did get stubborn. I don't believe he had that before. And he has Kalios, so he could shoot into combat. <laughs> I don't think he can have a shooting weapon, but whatever. That would be cool, however, if he if he just got like. Also, something like a Giselle, if you have an avatar of, of something and then you get a Giselle, that would be that would be cool. Um, you can have some Mortal Origin and a Patron DT. I think this this is uh, really flavorful, so you can choose one of these. Either um, when you lose health points due to unstable, the number of lost health points is reduced by the unit's full ranks to a maximum of 3. Uh, so that means that your discipline doesn't really matter anymore. Um, you're just not gonna care about discipline. Um, you're just gonna be unstable. You you still have to take panic tests though, I believe, because if you're unstable, you're not fearless. Uh, you can still flee with discipline six, so that is gonna be really really exciting. However, opponents are gonna have to. Um, to do a lot of damage to get panic checks on your units. Uh, Lord of the Legions, you gain a great weapon and paired weapons. So great weapon gets you to strength seven, and paired weapons get you to offensive five and five attack status. That is quite impressive. And then you have Pontifex Maximus. You will know the Awakened Swarm. In addition to other spells, also you get plus one to cast for the first casting attempt in each magic phase with your Occultism magic. Ooh. Um, yeah, you can take one of these, I think, yeah, I think you're not really going to care about this generally, because if you lose a couple of wounds, it doesn't really matter. Um, a lot of the Legion seems nice, but also the Pontifex Maximus, you get an extra spell for 25 points and that is quite cheap, so that is, that is, I think, going to be the pick for most people. And then we have the avatar of Akratos. You gain lightning reflexes. That is, that was unnecessary. <laughs> and you add two plus two <laughs> to your combat stress. Um, yeah, this was not needed, guys. <laughs> this is definitely not needed. Or oh, you get multiple wounds, D3 and swift strides. So he doesn't have swift stride because he's infantry. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think I would still prefer the Akratos things, mostly because of the lightning reflexes and the plus two to combat rests. Yeah, this is... Um, I'm not too big of a fan of this one, but yeah, we'll see. Because they, it was supposed to be a, a choice that was not that uh, capable in combat, and then yeah, suddenly also lightning reflexes. Um, and you can get the paired weapons for the plus one to hit, uh, plus one uh, attack. So, offensive five, lightning reflexes, five attack, strength five, but AP four is quite impressive, I would say. Uh, Avatar of Udius, you gain four to do four plus. I don't think every, anytime anyone is going to take this because you lose the Aegis. That makes you more vulnerable to flaming attacks. Um, yeah, so that is the, the Vermin Dictator. I like the other Ruinous Dictator. I like the general decrease in power. 
just also because I thought it was a bit extreme before. Uh, the 75 times 75 millimeter base, that is an interesting one because the model used to be 75 by 50. So now you can just put a small base behind it or in, on the front or the back of it, of it or whatever. Uh, but it makes for um, more models to be suitable to be used as a ruinous dictator. So I do like that aspect. Uh, yeah, then we go to the one a bit more common choices. So this is a Vermin Senator. This guy has the Valorous Discretion. So that he has to take a tower test once he's by himself, I believe. Um, the range of the model's commanding presence is set to 18 inches when measured to units with one or more models with Eagle Standard. Uh, I thought this guy would also have the rule that he cannot leave his unit. Da -da 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 -da. There's cheap Eagle Standard. Born into battle. Born into battle. He doesn't have born into battle. I thought this was a rule to limit the characters from running out of their units, but apparently it isn't. So I would say, design team, please just also do this <laughs> once you're at it, because otherwise you're gonna have uh, 150 point chaff everywhere. Basically, sure it's only gonna be March 10 chaff, but nothing as frustrating in these armies as. Uh, just your army being held up by one character just to uh, draw out one single round of combat. Um, yeah, so we only have Discipline 7 here. Um, you can get to Discipline 8 with the Crown of Autocracy, which I think is an item that actually should be removed from the main rulebook because, well, it's only useful on a couple of armies, and these armies could just have the item in their own uh, special equipment list. Um, you only have 2 attack strength 3 and resilience 3, and he's not a magic user, so he's a combat character, but it's a similar design to the Legion Legate in the, um, in the uh, Dread Elf army book, where you have a really supportive character that doesn't have a lot of combat prowess, but just supports the character and uh, supports the army in a different way, and this guy has a commanding presence of 18 inches when measured to units with one or more models with eagle standard, so he can give his discipline to them. They already can take rally around the flag because they, were, they are going to be within 18 inches of the general. Um, however, if he is the general, then he also gives his leadership back. I think this is going to be a popular choice for the general because it's a. Uh, it's basically, yeah. It's, it's just a cheap way to get Discipline 7. However, you can also, of course, just take uh, Blood for Commander as your general. Um, possibly with the Crown of Autocracy. Uh, you're only going to have Discipline se 6 or 7. But then again, when uh, the models... Oh, that's only the models unit. I thought that this guy maybe also gave his uh, Discipline in some other way, but... Yeah, it seems like this this 18-inch bubble is is really going to be quite impressive um, for this senator. Uh, you're only going to have discipline seven though. So the blood for commander is the next choice. Um, you can also just field these characters, of course, in the units that are a little bit further away from your main line, and then it's a 120-point upgrade for your unit to get four attack strength four. Um, well, strength five probably with a halberd uh, or something else. And you also get this uh, decimation special rule. So when the model's unit fails a discipline test after any rerolls, you may apply the following rules. So you roll a d6, uh, you add it to the discipline test as an additional instance of minimized roll, and the model's unit suffers a number of hits equal to the number. And you get that amount of wounds to your unit with no saves of any kind allowed. So that is quite interesting, I would say. It's an interesting way to try to keep your rats a little bit in their place. Um, I think this is going to work quite well on the flanks. However, the split sex is really, really crippling. Um, I like that, uh, generally, uh, that the discipline is going to be a big issue in the, uh, in the army. Because I'm just looking now quickly if you have any divination possibilities, but I don't think you have. You have Tomaturgy, Witchcraft, Occultism, and Occultism on the, on the Vermin Demon. 
So all you're ever going to get to is Discipline 6 with the Dictator, Discipline 7 with the Senator, Discipline 8 with the Crown of Autocracy, which I think a lot of people are going to take. Um, and then you have this Decimation Rule, of course. I thought there was something else still, but I might be not correct at that. You also have a house prefect, so this is basically a character that's like an engineer and a beast master and um, something like that, all in one. You can choose, uh, you must choose actually one of these options, and the pistol is the one that you can always choose. You have some other options that you can only choose if you're a special guy. You can also get one of these, these like things like a rotary gun and then you can also shoot it in a miss up way and um, your unit is actually going to get the hit so that is quite interesting you can just put this guy with a rotary gun or any other artillery weapon <laughs> in the unit and then you can just take the hits on the unit that is that's quite skaven like right <laughs> um yeah so you have to choose one of these options and yeah, you either are going to go for within 12 inches maximized roll for your giant rats, fattest brutes, which are the rat ogre type beasts, arena beasts, which are the gigantic ones, or any model on a Praetorian palanquin, or you're going to go for an engineer 3 plus, or you are going to go for something that gives all of your guys plus 2 agility and offensive skill and total player turn. That is quite impressive. Um, or you can detonate a single tunnel marker uh, within 24 inches of the guy. If you do, all units within 6 inches suffer 2d6 hits with strength 4. Um, during any friendly shooting phase, a single model with this can do that. So I think you can only do this once per turn. However, you can put all your tunnel markers, for example, near the objective near one of the objectives and just blast every single turn 2d6 hits on all units within 6 inches of the marker. That is that is scary. Um, I think you're going to see this at least a couple of times. If you take the Overseer... The... Yeah. And then we go for the Swarm Priest. This is going to be your main magic option if you don't take the Vernus Dictator. Um, but that guy also needs to be the general, so if you go for the other general, you're gonna have to do it with Swarm Priests. They are wizard apprentices, and they can... I thought they could become wizard adepts. Yes, wizard adept. Um, for 75 points, which is the normal price, um, you pay 115 points for the basic Swarm Priest, which is a normal price for a wizard apprentice. Um, you only have two hit points, however, so that is scary. Um, you have to choose whether you're going to be a Cilician Pantheon, Cilician Pantheon, or whether you belong to the Cult of Eraman. If you belong to the Cult of Eraman, you have this thing that if opponents roll a 1 to hit on you, then you're going to get a, give them a, a toxic hit. You can also get a Holy Triumvirate if you do this, then... And you have at least three models on your army list with that, then you can become wizard apprentices, and uh, or you can take the one, two, three, and four spells, and the one, two, three, four, five, six if you're a wizard adept. So that is your way of, of accessing the higher level spells um, in the path. Witchcraft is quite interesting here because you have the reroll to wound on shooting attacks now for us number six yeah that is going to be really impressive with this army with the amount of shooting that it can um, deploy Tomatoji is also quite interesting as always um, especially on wizard apprentices and wizard uh, wizard adept and occultism also still stays a, quite a strong lore so this is really damage focused witchcraft is really supportive um, Witchcraft also tones down the enemy shooting a little bit, so maybe it's gonna help with the uh, panic checks that you have to take yourself, but I don't know. Then we have the Duskblade Assassin. The Duskblade Assassin is, well, an assassin, so 
um, following up the Dread Elf Assassin rules, you have the Dark Doorways rule. So you mark up to three units of Vermin Velites, Vermin Legionaries, or Black Fur Veterans, or Shadow Fur Stalkers, or Ignifier Grenadiers. And then once per game at the start, the owner must deploy all of their Dust Play Assassins. You can choose one of the units and um, then replace it with an Assassin. So you don't have to deploy all of them in the same unit at the same time. You can just deploy all of them at the same time. But you can choose which units they are going in, divided over three different units. Then, um, yeah, you cannot be using, cannot be chosen as the model that suffers the penalties for refusing a duel. And this is a big one. Um, while the model's unit is in base contact with one or more enemy characters, the model gains plus one attack value for each other dust plate assassin. Uh, so basically, you want to run them as a triad as uh, just a a team basically um, so they start off with two attacks each with paired weapons so three attacks offensive five goes to six from the paired weapons with strength four with multiple wins two against characters and ap3 and divine attack so it's, it's really a character killing squad and the only downside i find is that it's also quite good still at just killing rank and file um, because you are going to get plus one attack value so if you field the three of them in one unit you're going to have a total of 15 attacks between the three of them offensive six strength um, four with agility eight with ap3 uh, so yeah that's going to be i don't know another six wounds to to uh, any general infantry unit anywhere um, divided over three units. I think that is still quite potent against uh, just normal rank of file. I would say that this would only need to trigger if you allocate your um, your attacks against characters. Um, and otherwise, I don't think it should trigger. And yeah, otherwise Multiple wounds two against characters seems, yeah, seems a little bit ex it seems a little bit too extreme with a total of fifteen attacks. Um, I I get this idea. I I think this is really cool. Plus one attack value for each other one. However, they also each get it. So every one that you deploy additionally in there is you're gonna get increasing rewards from that so maybe i would just set them to one attack each <laughs> to get a little bit less uh, out of that yeah but i think it's a it's a cool design the thing is also if you feel three of those then you're gonna be looking at 335 points no 400 for 435 points that is also quite a lot, and it's really a kill team that's gonna just go in, try to get a kill in, and then they're gonna die, probably. Uh, because there's quite a lot of stuff that has still offensive. Well, offensive 6 is quite rare, so you're gonna probably hit them on 5s. But the resilience 3, no armor. Mm, yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's the uh, Duskblade Assassins. And then for the character mounts, we'll just quickly go over these. Uh, so we have a Praetorian Brute, that's yeah, just used to be the same, kind of. We have a gigantic construct of 80 by 80, wow, <laughs> that's quite big. It has three rat ogres underneath, wow, damn, <laughs> damn, damn. <laughs> okay, I don't know how, how expensive this is, but this should be like... 200 points as well yeah 240 points that makes sense okay that makes sense you know oh no that was the sacred pl platform that i looked at here triumphal platform triumphal platform 340 even yeah triumphal. does it also make you gigantic because if it does so Yes, it is gigantic. So if you take this on a vermin senator, 
it's set to 18 inches and you cannot go on this but you can take a blood fur commander put him on the triumphal platform then your inspiring presence reaches up to 18 inches however you're still gonna be stuck with discipline 6 and you're not gonna get the decimation rule in your commanding presence bubble okay okay then the sacred platform this used to be the either the plague pendulum or the bell so it's still either the bell or the plague pendulum um yeah basically they have been toned down a bit um <laughs> then again these two these now d6 plus three grinding attacks at strength five for the plague pendulum and then another red ogre and then i don't know what that was really in Incredible. Uh, so you don't get any stubborn anymore from this thing, which is good. Um, it has seven wounds now with Aegis five up and resilience five, armor two. I don't know if you can. You don't get to increase this armor anymore because it doesn't say armor character. Um, you have eight acolytes on top. They start out with a great weapon. I believe here it says yeah here it also says that you gain great weapon. So probably. The intention is that if you play it as a bell, you get great weapon guys, and if you play it as the pulpit, you get bad weapons and poison attacks. It gives you a bounce spell. Um, that's cool. Um, you are born into battle, so you are deployed in the unit. You can never leave the unit. And same as with the, the Dread Elf uh, Crucible of Slaughter now. Um, yeah, they, it's less impressive than it was before, but I think it's still just a nice way to, to spice up the army a little bit then we get to the core of the book um, yeah so the focus here is mostly around cohort coordination uh, that we saw before so this cohort coordination this was the fact that just to remind you quickly uh, you get two instances of fight an extra rank whilst your unit is steadfast so you Everything is going to have a lot of fight and extra rank. We start with the Velites. Um, they only can take 25 models in their unit. So these are going to be the, the skirmishing. Yeah, not really the skirmishing units, but the units with the slings. Um, you have 18 inches on these. I don't think these are ever going to see play, to be honest. Maybe in 15 units. 15 man units because they're still scoring. Your sling hits on a 4 plus. You gain plus 1 strength and shooting from short range, that's nice. However, you don't have quick to fire. I don't know if the sling has a special rules itself. I don't think it's in the main rule book. So you don't have you don't have quick to fire, you don't have um, accurate. So hitting on a 4 plus is gonna be rare. I think, I think throwing weapons are going to be the, the choice for most people here and then it's it's really hard to argue why you would take this over just the Vermin Legionnaires because you are going to have the points with these kind of point costs so if you take the Vermin Legionnaires then you have the same stats let me see you have the same stats However, your equipment is different. You don't have paired weapons, but you can take a shield if you want for parry, with your defensive too. Um, and then without number, make sure that you can swarm up as much as you want. But if you take this, then every unit that can has to take this. Um, so the shield gives you one point of model uh, upgrade. Spear is fight an extra rank and it comes for free, <laughs> basically. Um, but here you can get like up to six models in your unit. I have no clue how wide you would play these units, but I think you're going to be stretched for uh, space in your deployment area <laughs> if you're going to deploy them five wide. Um, yeah, so this is basically your your rattled arms or what the rattled arms used to be. You're going to have uh, to cope with one attack, a defensive three, strength three. Not a lot of combat buffs in uh, in your magic. Um, not like uh, evocation with reroll to hit and reroll to wound with the amount of attacks that you have. That would be cool. 
Um, and defensively, you have one hit point with defense of two, which is really crippling. You don't realize how crippling this is, but a lot of stuff with defensive three is gonna suddenly hit you on three plus. Um, and resilience two, <laughs> this is also really, really crippling. However, all the, the wins that you are gonna get are only gonna count half towards combat res. So I think in the end you're gonna see a lot of uh, of just full units of these guys because 25 models is not gonna cut it, especially with panic checks being an issue with only discipline five. I think it's a really cool um, standard profile for for legionaries. I I have no idea if this is going to work on the table. Um, I think their role is mostly going to be to to clog up the lines, and I think as an opponent, it's going to be the safest if you just charge in and you just make sure that the opponent's shooting has to be. Distributed over the legionnaires and over yourself. Then you have the black fur veterans. They are double the amount of points. Um, they have defensive three, so <laughs> that's a big upgrade here. You also have offensive four, so that is quite good. Um, court coordination. You have a halberd, so you go to strength four AP one. You have heavy armor shield, so shield works against shooting. And then you have the avrasi formations. So you have a close formation model against plus or more armor against shooting attacks from shooting models located in the unit's front arc. This is not gonna apply for shooting attacks made from your own units. Um, I think this is gonna be the, mo the biggest contribution to um, shooting attacks not coming from your front arc. Um, so you are gonna have still a 4 up armor save against your own shooting. A Three up armor save mostly against uh, opponent shooting if you have a close formation. If you have a line formation, then you have a reroll to wound of ones with close combat attacks. That is uh, quite interesting. You can upgrade these guys to become blood for Praetorians, then you get bodyguards. Um, so you are going to be stubborn at discipline seven, or if you're, uh, yeah, because you have a vermin senator. Mm, discipline 7 stubborn with a reroll because you have an eagle standard. Mm. I don't know if this is going to be worth it. it. It just seems like a lot of stuff. If they lose combat, they're going to run and they're not that likely to rally. I, I'm still just perplexed by the discipline here because I. I was hoping that they would do something like this, and I never expected it, and then they did. <laughs> then we have the slaves. Slaves, they have discipline 3, so, oh my god, that is really appalling. Um, they really need to be close to your general, or they have to be in really big units, which you can do, because you can field them in 80 model units, you can just put 80 models on the flank. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, if they lose combat, you're kind of screwed. Um, but then again, who's going to care about 135 points if you have some kind of guarantee that it might be okay? Um, so you can just deploy two units of 80 on the flank and then hope they don't panic each other. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> but this is kind of the stat line that I had hoped that, that slaves would get. I think if you're playing Vermin Swarm, then maybe this is a bit of a hit to the face. Um, also, they only have Kalios, insignificant life steep, but no cohort coordination. So they don't get twice fight an extra rank. You just are gonna have to cope with one attack per model with offensive one and with strength three. If you play them in horde formation, which you're gonna likely do if you have 80 models, then you're gonna fight in three ranks. <laughs> but you don't get any rank bonus. Uh, special, so you have the Shadow First Talkers, these are the... I don't know what these guys were called before. They're basically the light troops, they are skirmishers, and they are smugglers. So they can start in tunnel reserve, and you can reroll ambush rolls of these guys if they're in reserve. 
Hard target one to protect them a little bit from shooting, I guess. Um, poison attacks for paired weapons. Um, and they only have poison attacks on the close combat attacks. I think this is also something they should have done with the Black Cloaks in the Dreadhalf Army book. Um, yeah, you can take throwing weapons if you want, or pistols. I don't know, it's just a... It's it. I think it's just a flavorful skirmish unit. That's nice. Nice. Plague Disciples, so this used to be one of the most hard-hitting units in the previous book. You can get great weapons on these guys, so the Plague Flail is finally gone, thank you. Um, you are gonna have two attacks each with Strength 3, which is gonna be Strength 5 with the Great Weapon. You have the Cult of Araman, so if you hit these guys on a 1-2 hit, you're gonna get a Toxic hit yourself. Uh, they have Bodyguard with uh, Sacred Platform. Uh, this, actually, this these guys didn't use to be the Plague Disciples, because these don't have light troops, nor Frenzy. Um, I believe these are the, the Plague Monks, were they? Plague? No, they weren't Plague Disciples. You are going to go down to Resilience 3 in this edition, however, and you don't have Frenzy anymore. I don't know why you don't have Frenzy anymore, but maybe it's a bit of a discipline issue. Um, you do get fearless, so that is that is quite useful. Um, and you get paired weapons and poison attacks that you can get to a five of poison if you put the uh, the plague pendulum basically in the unit. And five of poison is quite decent with um, with these guys. You don't have co out coordination, however, the platform itself gave you sixteen attacks. So if you have these next to it, you can have twenty attacks, twenty. Uh, like 22 attacks coming out of the unit with poison on a 5 plus. That seems fine. That seems cool. Giant rats, giant rats. They lost their tiny roll, so they cannot move through your army anymore, but they have advanced 7 and March 14 inches now, instead of the 12 that they used to have, I believe. I don't know. They are standard beasts, so they have swift stride, which is cool. Um, they have the same offensive and are the same strength and resilience as uh, as the bigger reds. <laughs> uh, devastating charge plus one attack, cool. Yeah, this is basically what the unit used to be, but they're only 80 points. However, that's only for 10 models, so I thought cheap chaff was going to disappear from the game. <laughs> Apparently, it isn't. Um, However, you can still chase away with a tower causer, probably, because they're not fearless or anything. Then these guys say, wait, where is the special section? Oh, this is the special section, so what I was saying about the plate is, say... Hey. I only realize now that the plate disciples and the plate monks have actually been merged into plate disciples. Well, that's going to upset some people, I think. <laughs> anyway, we have the fattest brutes. They are red ogres, and they are red ogres. They still have three hit points. They still have resilience five, like they used to have. Uh, they are callous, so you can just shoot at them in combat. Uh, I know, wait. Callous allows you to shoot in combat and stuff, I believe. But then you can target anything up to... Standard infantry or a large infantry. Callus. Callus here. Health point losses of the model that are caused by friendly models are ignored for panic. That's gonna be the part that is gonna be important for the run overs. And you can use shooting attacks, but the what are they called? Fetish brutes. They are not allowed to. Uh, to shoot, so they don't use that part of the callous rules. They do have scoring, you can have 15 models in a unit, so finally we're going to be able to see hordes of uh, large infantry, because then you're going to have to be four, no, six models wide, I thought. I don't know. 
even if you have to be four months right going in all automation wouldn't really give you a benefit because well you already can't find an extra rank so just for 310 points you're getting 18 resilience five hit points that is quite cool you can just wow that is quite cool uh, you can fill them too wide then, then you're not going to be steadfast, however, <laughs> steadfast on discipline 5 or 7, whatever. Um, so, yeah, if you fill them too wide, then you're still going to have 6 attacks, you're going to have 2 stomps. 2 attacks really cripples this unit, I think. It's it's interesting. This is one of the things that I'm I'm really eager to know how it's going to work out because now it just seems like a very sturdy wound pool at which you can shoot yourself because well any hit points that you lose you're not going to lose that many hit points to your own shooting with resilience five but then again clan rats are way cheaper or the, the vermin legionnaires are way cheaper than this so marmillo brutes they used to be vermin hawks in the previous book um, you can have four models in the unit, you can have six models in the unit, you can have three units in your army, so you can field a total of 18 of these guys if the points don't go over uh, the tunnel gunner limit, which is 30%. Let me see. Just curious if you can just fill up your entire shooting quota with, quote them with these 30%. So if one if one of these units is going to be 450 points, then you can pull it off to put three of those units. Well, if you have six models, then you're going to be 420. So then you cannot go for 18 Marmello Brutes with Jesuit. <laughs> that seems okay. <laughs> I believe you can go for. Uh, 16 of them you could I mean if even if you want like three units of four of these with uh, with some kind of upgrade then it is still quite okay I would say funny thing is that you can uh, you can give them different um, equipments but the entire unit is gonna have the same equipment and previous edition um, you would put the, the weapon on the champion. It was also a bit more potent than one single of these other um, shooting weapons. However, now you're going to have a full unit of these guys. Um, I don't know how effective it's going to be in, in with regard to uh, um, effectiveness, um, with regard to do the specific counters. So, if you look at the profile, it's 3 attack, strength 5, agility 4, with AP 2, um, with offensive 3, to it, that's apparently quite good for uh, for Vermin Swan. So, you can end up for a unit of 4 with 12 attacks, um, with, if you take a shooting weapon, just hand weapon, so 12 attacks, strength 5, so you're going to hit 6 times. Um, on infantry, you're going to wound 5 times with strength 5 hit 2, so that's going to be 5 wounds, so you're going to do 2 stomps or so. So against infantry, you're quite okay in terms of damage output. So I would say that preferably you would want a shooting weapon that deals with something else than infantry, because that's not going to be the biggest threat to this unit if you play them on the flank. However, if you play them within your line, then it doesn't really matter what kind of shooting weapon you go for because you can rely on other parts of your army countering um, any threat that they might face at some point. So at that point, it might be interesting to put a deep fire thrower on one of these units to just get rid of infantry. However, the unit cannot score more hits than there are models in the target unit. So if you have a full unit with deep fire throwers, then I th what is the range on a deep fire thrower? Deep fire thrower. Nine models per army. Uh, 18 inches, strength three, AP zero, and 
Yeah, the mishap misfires. Yeah, this is something where the design feels a bit wrong. Because... So this... Just to think this out, you have 6 Mamela Brutes, that's 420 points. You put deep fire throwers on them, so that's 90 points. It's 510 points. Um, you will want to get a magician, but it's, well, it's not 10 points. Um, then you have 6 flamethrowers with 18 inch range. With 18 inch range, where is it? Here, with 18 inch range, um, and on a 2 plus they hit. And then, I'm gonna do a strength 3 hit, uh, d6 strength 3 hits, I believe, and then d3 for every rank. Your target has, you have six of those, so you're gonna have five of them that hit normally. Um, so that's gonna be five d6 plus, or well, five d3 per rank that you have. So if you're five wide, then everyone in the unit is gonna get hit. Strength 3, AP0. So you're gonna wound. So you're gonna remove one third of the infantry unit. Yeah, that's not even that impressive, I would say. However, the mishap is also not that impressive because you're gonna get D6 strength two hits on your unit with resilience five, so that doesn't matter. You can also go for strength strength four. Yeah, but then you're still AP zero. I don't think you're gonna use this. Canister launcher seems interesting. Six catapults with toxic attacks <laughs> at 24 inches. Also, that is that is more interesting. Rotary gun is also interesting because you get um, AP two shots. And you're not limited to the amount of uh, models in the target unit. So let's go through that. So you're going to take these guys, each with rotary guns. Um, so that's a little bit more expensive. But that's not too bad. So the rotary guns, they had a range of... Rotary gun here, a range of 18 inches. You have d6 shot strength for AP2. You can move 6 inches um, if you want, and you probably have a unit that can go in front of it. Um, so that's going to be the first turn that you shoot, for example. You're going to have 66 shots, but that still needs to hit, I think. 66 shots. Jesus. 66 shots, yeah that's on a 4 plus, so then you're gonna shoot at long range, you are quick to fire though, so one third of your shots is gonna hit, so you're gonna have 2d6 hits, and that's gonna be 7 hits. Yeah, that shooting is not that impressive for, for what you're paying for it, but then again you still have a bit more reliable large infantry unit underneath it. I mean strength 5, resilience 5 is quite rare on, on large infantry for the reason. Yeah. Legendary drill team, 2 units per army max. Um, so this is standard infantry, it's a drill team 40-40 mil for 8 points. So it's basically just a normal rat. It does have armor 3 which is apparently quite rare in the army. You have strength 6, AP3, D3 grind attacks. That's cool. Um, and um, what does it do? <laughs> you can be removed. So. If you were, what? Okay. The model's unit may be removed from the battlefield and placed on tunnel reserve. That's funky. That's that's funky. That's a funky movement trick. I like it because it's well funky. I don't know how it's gonna work out, but it's funky. 
these are the Ignifier Grenadiers, so they used to be the Globadiers, yes, Globadiers. Um, yeah, so they have light troops, camisure, normal profile. Um, they now have deep fire grenades, range 8 inches, shots 2, strength 6, AP2 on a 5. <laughs> and you do have 40 fire. I don't know if you if you have shots 2 with 40 fire, if you can do 2 shots also. Or if supporting guys can only make 1 shot, I honestly have no clue. 15 models. Can you take a unit of 15 models? Light troops. This is a really cool uh, counter attack unit. Like you just keep them somewhere within your line and then you march. Uh, can they march and shoot? They can't. They are skirmishers, so they can march and shoot, I think. Your yeah, accurate quick to fire. Yeah, so you have an 18 inch threat range with <laughs> two shots per model. So if you have 15 of these guys, then you're gonna do 10 hits with strength 6, AP2, 4, 7, 4, 2, and 300 points basically. Interesting choice, I would say. Probably just in a minimal unit because they're quite specialized. But it's it's really good against monsters, right? It's funny. Also it's flaming attacks so no regeneration. Hydra eyes don't like this. Experimental weapon team. So these are the weapon teams. You can take three to six models in a unit, zero to three units in an army. You are gonna take three units of these guys in your army, that is for sure. Um, so you have to choose either Gisils, Gisils we know they are the trusted Gisils. These guys, they only have resonance 2, so this is where I think it becomes really clear that the trial and terror mechanism still doesn't really work on the Red Ogres, or the, what were they called? Muramillo Brutes, because of the high resilience of that unit. But here, if you get D6 strength 2 hits with AP 0, you have heavy armor, so the D6 hits can still just take away a quarter of your unit. And then you're going to have to take a panic test, so that is going to be interesting. Um, the bigger your unit are, the more hit points you have, the less susceptible you are to the D6 hits. Um, yeah. Kind of to launch a deep fire thrower, rotary gun. So the rotary gun in a big unit, it's, it's going to be a lot of shots. And they are nearly as mobile as the uh, the rat, the Murmillo brutes. Yeah. Cool. Um, people just need to buy some more experimental weapon teams. <laughs> Team Spark devices. That's a five fifty times one hundred. I thought this was the Dread Mill, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it is the Dread Mill, I believe. Is it the Dreadmill? It is the Dreadmill. So the Doomspark device now. You have one, two, three models in the unit, up to three models per army. You have Swift Stride on Advanced 6. That's cool. Funny thing is that you get an extra six inches. No, you don't. Where was that? Okay. So the Doomspark device, three engineers, la 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 la. You have chain lightning, so the grind attacks are lightning attacks, you have d6 grind attacks and then you have up to three models in your army, so you can go to 3d6 grind attacks. Um, but you're not light troops, so you're going to be a chariot unit with advanced 6 march 10. That is going to be quite crippling, however on the flank they could still uh, work quite well. You also have a dark stone generator. Shots D6 with strength D6, uh, mishap for the roll of number of sock shots, you have reload, that is good. Um, you hit automatically all units within 6 inches of the model's unit. So if you have 3 of those, those it's 3D6, hits, 
hits, yes, 3d6 hits with lightning attacks on everything within 6 inches. That is gonna hurt. Yeah. Okay. Number of shots. Apply this one, yeah. And roll the strength of the hits for each targeted unit individually. That is funny um, because it averages out the strength a bit. But I think it's also fair. Fair enough, Tillery. Um, yeah, this is what we knew before as the uh, mouse cannon this time. <laughs> that is really cool. And these Gorget Ordnance. Cool, Ordnance. Um, so we have a mouse cannon um, with a range of 48 inches, strength 7, practically uh, multiple wins D3. Or you can shoot at 24 inches with multiple wins d6 and this is quite unique in the game currently but you do miss up on two hit rolls of one and two you only have four hit points so if you do get the trial and tower mishap with d6 strength six hits you might just blow up your piece in one go um, but it's gonna be 210 points a good shot at a monster that might be worth it and the scorch hit ordnance hit Luckily, doesn't have toxic attacks anymore. That was so incredible. Um, a catapult with 4x4, I believe it used to be, with toxic. So basically, it had a reroll on the two hit roll, uh, only going from a 4x4 to a 3x3, which still was enough damage to just cripple any night unit. Um, you can also fire it up to 30 inches and then you replace the catapult 4x4 by 6x6. By six by six. Strength 4, 6x6 six six is tough. I have played with mortars in Empire of Sunstar. They have strength 3, AP1, and you can get Flaming Swords for strength 4. <laughs> if they hit with 6x6, six six, you just cripple a unit. But they have AP1, and that also makes a, quite a difference. 190 points is a decent price. Just each option is 0 to 2, so you can take up to 4 of these, like being 2 cannons and 2, uh, two catapults. Then we have the Bread and Games, max 20% in your army, so max 900 points. Oh, here are the Dreadmill Chariots, with a base size of 50 by 75. Oh, yeah, I saw these also. Stygian Earth Breaker, so this is basically the steam tank of the army, it has armor 3 on. However, shooting attacks from enemy models located in the model's front arc, they give the model plus 3 armor. Also, melee attacks from units engaged with the models front facing. This doesn't apply to magic, so this is going to be a thing to take down with magic or with shooting from the flank. Um, it has devastating charge, fear, it has ground attacks or impact rates 2d3 at strength 6. And I think that's quite cool. Basically, it's a Vermin Swamp style steam tank. It's 290 points, it seems expensive in the army. Um, I think it's going to be worth it in the army, uh, just because it's one of these things that are going to be reliable. Um, even though it doesn't have any way of being immune to panic checks from other units around it. That's a tunnel marker, can start in tunnel reserve, so it can start in tunnel reserve and not be affected by panic. And once again, can be removed from the battlefield and placed in the tunnel reserve. Wow. So, don't worry if you can say it's just going to dig in the ground if it's on one left. And then on turn 6 you want it to deploy again, because otherwise it counts as destroyed. Okay. Treadmill chariots, 1 to 3 models in the army. No, 1 to 3 models per unit and 2 units in the army, so you can have up to 6. 50 by 75 millimeter base, that's a funky one. Um, advance 5 only. Uh, however, you have plus d6 inch to your charge roll in the charge phase. Um, so you are going to have swift stride and an extra d6, so you are going to have maximized 46, taking the highest 3 effectively, and your extra 5 inches, so that's going to be 
six, 17 inches, 18 inches, something like that, probably, I think. Um, defensively, for hit points with armor 3, flammable. I think flammable is cool on these wooden constructs. And then offensively, if you get into combat, you're either gonna have one grind attack or you're gonna have the impact hits. So this unit really goes for the impact hits. D6 plus 1 impact hits per model, 3 models in a unit. I don't know if I would play a single one, maybe just for clearing chaff of your opponent. But then D6 plus 1 impact hits at strength 5 plus 1 strength 3 attacks is not gonna be enough, I feel. Then again, a wolf chariot kind of does the same. Uh, and immediately before a model is removed as a casualty, the model inflicts d6 hits with strength 4 against all units within 6 inches of the model, including the model's unit. Wow. 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 So that can trigger another time, probably. So you have this unit of 3 models, you can kill one of them. Then it does d6 hits to itself, then you can kill another one, and it can also do d6 hits to itself. So if you shoot a magic missile at this, and you inflict 5 wounds on the unit, basically the unit is gone, because you can uh, inflict another d6 hits with strength 4, AP 0, it does have armor 3 down. But then the, one of the models still falls, and then the last one might also still just fall. <laughs> okay. Uh, but the grind attacks are not really. It, it, it is really a good chaff clearing piece. I think you're going to see these a whole lot. But it might be uh, just completely wrong. I think the last choice is going to be the Arena Beast here. Yeah. This used to be either the uh, Gigantic Rat ridden by a character or the. Uh, what were they called? Well, the random movement uh, Gigantic Beasts. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. So it's more reliable now, unless you go for the random movement option. Uh, you get plus three attacks if you go for that. Um, however, it will always have 3d3 strength seven attacks, and with the random movement you get plus three attacks. Strength seven, AP three, offensive three. This is what cripples the wasteland beam off really badly. It will probably also cripple this beast. Um, armor 2, Fortitude 5, well, that's good. Yeah. It seems, in comparison to the rest, it seems a little bit dull. Yeah. It's just that this is basically the entire rules of the beast, and this is just that you replace some stuff in it. That's funny. It, that just seems a bit dull. But. Yeah, sorry that I'm ending on such a low note. <laughs> but this is the entire uh, overview of everything. Um, yeah, so rules wise, what do I think about it? Um, I think it's really nice that I, yeah, I don't really know if this tunnel stuff has to, that they really try to put it in there and I guess it can work. I could imagine that you could also include it in the sense of uh, how Undying Dynasties has like the Terracotta armor, our army, that you do that kind of stuff. It feels a bit forced if you just have one tunnel marker and you don't want any more. Uh, this is cool, this is cool, Callus. I think it's really good that there's no way to improve this 4 plus role. Uh, eagle standards, I think, are really necessary. Life is cheap is the pivotal um, rule in the army. So this is not on all choices. But, uh, da -da -da -da, go on, coordination, cool. This, I don't know how crippling it But then again, Chaos also has a lot of attacks and Elves manage quite well against that. The, 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 the trial and Tower is cool, I think. Lightning attacks is 
cool except for the fact where the dreadmills or the, the thing that replaced the dreadmills average out that's a bit less shooting weapons cool I've, I've, well <laughs> cool kill everything's cool <laughs> no i think they they did a really well really good job on everything the only thing i would say is that there's up at this moment there's some funky rules that you see if you go through the entire book and it seems like it's a lot to remember however once you have it down on the table i think it's really going to be okay because the most of the stuff is rather basic like this is kind of basic the legionnaires are quite basic the black first yeah this this is just the single unit in the army that has a rule like this, I believe. Also, life is cheap. Slave. Yeah, and the tunnel reserves are just gonna be something new. I think it would be nice. Yeah, there's no life is cheap. Yeah, so the big guys don't have life is cheap. So the combat rest really counts against them. Ooh, that's gonna be scary. I think it's it's really cool. Um, I would hope that there would be a way to not play at all with the tunnel markers, especially to get um, some um, some less experienced players also a bit more up to speed. And I'm really curious how it's going to play out on the table. Well, this is going to be my review <laughs> of the book. Um, yeah, just let me know what your opinion is. I'm, I'm really curious what people think of it. Uh, my biggest concern right now is that it's probably been tested a lot on Universal Battle, giving you a lot of opportunities and putting any kind of number of any model on the table. And I think there's going to be a lot of Vermin's One collections that are not going to be able to cope with this sheer amount of models that you need. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll hopefully see you the next time.